Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Teen Talk Live. I am your host, Ann Dillard, and it is such a pleasure to be here with you to share on this platform with some, one of my colleagues, somebody I love and admire so much, Dr. Laura Lewis. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Like, I think it's so amazing what you're doing, creating a space for us to have conversations like this. And so I just applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, I love and follow your work and all that you're doing, especially your travels, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love to travel. Traveling yes. is my jam. I cannot wait until we can start traveling again. I know. Say that. So Dr. <laughs> Lewis, please tell my audience who you are and how you serve in the world. Sure, absolutely. So I'm a couples therapist. I have a practice called Atlanta Couple Therapy, and I have an online community called Black Marriage Matters, and it's a Facebook group. It's over 6,000 couples in there, um, and so couples are my jam. I just recently launched a program called After I Do Academy, and it's kind of my give back, my way of serving and supporting couples to just have a better relationship. I'm also a speaker. I've done just over a thousand workshops on relationship related topics. Um, I do a lot of work internationally. I've gone to over 20 countries. I have a book, it's called Marital Peace. Um, that's my book, it's on Amazon. Um, but couples is my jam. Relationship <laughs> topics is like, it lights me up. And mainly because like, I've seen a lot of relationships go wrong in my family. I've seen a lot of divorce. My grandparents, my aunts, uncles, my parents, my siblings, everybody's divorced. And so I kind of got a front row seat as a child. So what happens when a couple goes from this place of loving each other to mm -hmm. the distance and then separation. And so it always made me curious about how relationships work and yeah. last over time. So you have declared it stops here, not on my watch, right? <laughs> here yes <laughs> that Absolutely. is that is so awesome not on my watch well i'm so glad again dr laura that you're here and we've been having dialogue on team talk live about you know surviving COVID 19 and how to help the family how to help your teens and and things like that but i wanted to step back and look at the the marriage um the institution of marriage the couples uh, um, the parents in this in this equation. And um, I just think that it's, it's so critical that we have this conversation and yeah. help empower um, the couples as they go through safeguarding their marriage during this time. Yeah, that's good. I know there are a lot of couples who um, experience the increased conflict and the communication is strained. And so that's one of the areas that I specialize in is helping couples to communicate better, rebuild yeah. trust, um, have better intimacy. Those, those are the main areas that I focus on in counseling. Awesome. Excellent. So when we look at this, what are um, some of the top things that you're seeing with couples? Because I'm imagining that because this is so unprecedented, there's no script. And I'm imagining that, like we're seeing in, in my practice, there's an increase in anxiety. And with that unpredictability, there's, um, there's an increase, a decrease in communication or effective communication. So share with us, what are some of the things that we, what you're seeing that's impacting the married some of the things that I'm seeing is that um, couples are having to deal with each other more now than ever. And so for some couples, yes. it's like, like, I can't get away from you. I wake up and you there. Go to sleep, like, all the time. And right. so while well, they used to be able to just go to work for 10 hours a day, now it's like they're with each other all the time. All the and time. So, 
all the time. And so, um, you know that saying, find this makes the heart grow fonder, where there's no absence, like they're just with each other. And and as a result, for some couples, that can be stressful because they may not have any respite, like any break, any time to themselves. And, and so that's one of the things that I help couples with is to to ask for what you need because sometimes we don't even know how to ask or we may not even know what we need yeah. and so what I find is that when we get depleted then it's hard to be there for anybody else you know I travel a lot and every single time I travel they say put the air mask on yourself first before exactly. you try to help anybody and that's because like we really cannot just search from an empty tank an empty cup um, so that's some of the, those are some of the issues that I see is not having any respite, not having any breaks, um, date night. Like I've been working with couples in my After I Do Academy on how they can have creative date nights, like um, card night and picnic at home and movie night and just getting creative on how they can still have fun together because uh, couples are missing that. And then for some couples, we're seeing increased abuse, increased um, mm -hmm. verbal abuse, emotional mm -hmm. abuse, and even sometimes physical abuse. And yeah. so- And if sexual we, abuse too. That's, exactly. That is so on the rise right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important that you have this space to have these conversations because um, couples need a blueprint. A lot of times you might be in an environment where you never saw um, how to communicate or how mm -hmm. to resolve conflict. And all you know is what you saw growing up, which may or may not be effective. And so um, that's what I'm a specialist in is helping couples build those tools and strategies on how to resolve conflict. I think that's really good because I'm thinking about myself and my husband is on, hey babe, <laughs> thanks for watching. And I'm thinking about myself and I'm a worker. So I'll get up from morning till night and I'll just work, work, work. And I'm glad that I have the balance with my husband because he'll ask for what he needs and he'll be like, well, you know, you need to stop. We need to spend some time together. Right. As because sometimes I feel like I have no gauge. Mm, yeah. yeah. And that's something I can relate to too, as you know, just being a super driven businesswoman, like you get excited about what you do and passionate about what you do. And I know for me, like sometimes the hours could just go on by and I'm yes. just like doing my thing. And so I think like just being with my husband for over 17 years, we have been able to navigate a lot of different challenges in our marriage, challenges that at one point I thought was going to take us out. Like, I don't know if I could do this. I know it sounds where he felt like that, like yes. when I was in grad school and working and just not as available like um, the traditional wife would be. And so it's something to be able to navigate and have flexibility around roles and gender roles. Um, those are some of the challenges that we've had to navigate, you know? Yeah. And I love that you talk about gender roles because that has been such a, um, a stumbling block and a barrier in a lot of marriages. Well, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. And I'm like, especially I, I'm relating to my marriage. We, you know, we don't have some of those gender roles because my husband does the grocery shopping and sometimes I'm working. So he does the cooking, right? And, and things like that. And he doesn't have a problem doing that. And I think if we can look beyond those stereotypical mm -hmm. yeah. gender roles, I think we can get along a lot better. Absolutely. And like my dissertation, that's uh, I wrote my dissertation on marital satisfaction in the Black community. And so that's one of the strength factors within Black couples is having flexibility around gender roles, having more egalitarian relationships where there is a sense of shared power. And so that's what helps our relationships be resilient. Yes, that is so true. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm glad. Again, I'm glad I'm have, we're having this conversation because look, it's helping me too. <laughs> so what, you know what, um, when I was talking with uh, uh, some parents the other day, I was talking about, you know, during this time, it's important that you create some traditions in the family. Mm -hmm. 
create some new traditions because everybody is scared, a little nervous, and there, yeah. there's a lot of fear going on. And Absolutely. so- um, when that's happening, some of us have a tendency to, you know, the, the typical trauma response where you fight, flight, or freeze. And in some, in couples, a lot of times, you know, you'll see couples that'll pull away from mm -hmm. each other during this time. So talk to our audience about what are some of the things that they can um, do to increase and to safeguard you know just put these safeguards in place so that you can get through this um quarantine and still like each other still like each other i love that. <laughs> right um, i think one thing is recognize when you are in that cycle like fight flight or freeze like recognize when it's happening um access well what was the trigger because i know sometimes i'll get stressed and i'm like but what was it like what really made me upset and so even though i'm a psychologist sometimes i need to sit myself down and just really think about okay what's happening with me right now? Is this real? Like, is this a real fear? Like, yeah. I know for me, when I first, um, when the quarantine first happened, I thought, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen with my practice and all these fears and worrisome thoughts. Um, but re in reality, I increased my my um, clients during this, this process. And so sometimes we're afraid of things that aren't even real. You know, it's something yeah. that hasn't even happened yet or is not going to happen and so I think that's the first step is identifying what is the trigger is this a real trigger what can I do about it focus on the things that are within your control um yes. like for some people finances is something that is a stressor well maybe I can pick up a part-time gig maybe I can get creative with my gifts and talents you know um there are so many different ways to create um, new revenue streams during this time. I know um, one lady who she started making plates. Um, I know wow. I've done webinars, you know, I do telemental help and it's, it's just the, the, there's endless possibilities that exist, but sometimes we need to just take ourselves out of that fight, flight, or freeze, as you said, um, mindset, like get some tools and strategies on how to like, all right, get back to that soothing in place. So for me, that's prayer, that's meditation. Those mm -hmm. are some things that I do regularly um, when I just need to settle myself. Even breathing, you know, sometimes when we are stressed, we're not even breathing. We're breathing like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. This focusing is. in on your breath helps calm down your heart rate um and then when you're able to do that then you're able to access your internal resources like your prefrontal cortex which is responsible for higher order thinking mm -hmm. and so for some of my couples they 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 may feel like ah oh, i just got triggered i don't know what happened and then they start fighting but when they take a moment, walk away from the situation, do something soothing, then they're like, man, I think we could do this or we could do that. Or they get clear about, all right, this is how we're going to solve this problem. But it's because they stepped away. Yes. They practice the coping skills and now they can access the internal resources. So I'll just pause there for a moment because I know I said a lot. No, that's that's real good. And we've got people chiming in. And Melody says, um, we do not either. I think she's talking about typical uh, gender roles. She says, my husband do laundry, shopping, cleaning and cooking. You have to work together. And that is so true. And they've been married for almost 30 years. And um, Joseph was saying, ask for what you need. That's very important. And flexibility, uh, make it work for you. And I, I mean, those are all good stuff that we have to consider. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that people are talking back to us. Guys, you are live with two therapists. So ask your <laughs> question, shoot your shot. Like if you have something... Yes that you are struggling with or something that you know somebody in your life is struggling with, then this is the time you know, post your question. But yeah, these are some of the challenges that I see that couples yeah. um, struggle with. And then specifically related to communication, um, mm. I'll see criticism, stonewalling, defensiveness, contempt, um, which is basically like um, sarcasm or hostile humor. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, you've said a mouthful right there because that is so, I mean, there's nothing that tears you down 
more quickly than criticism yeah. or the perception that somebody is criticizing you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right? And so instead, focusing on what you need in a way that expresses a positive need. So for example, if I go in and I'm like, you so lazy, you never wash the dishes. Then my husband will get defensive and be like, well, dang, like, I don't do nothing right. Versus if I say, you know, babe, the dishes are piling up and I start to feel stressed when they pile up. Is it possible that like I'll wash the dishes twice a week? Could you wash the dishes twice a week or something like that? Like make a request, a specific request. request instead of an accusation. Right. You got it. That is that is so key. I um I learned this one uh technique from Dr. Brene Brown. You know, I love her work, I love right? Her too. And so she said, uh, um, one of the questions, you know, somebody, she gave this example about her husband. She was busy, distracted and in, in, um, doing her work, meeting deadlines. And mm-hmm. one day her husband came home and he opened the refrigerator and he made this big sigh and closed the refrigerator back. And she lost it because immediately she internalized it that he was saying or responding in a way that's critical of her and so one of the things that we learn through her curriculum is to ask the question what is the story that you're telling yourself right now Mm, that's good right because I might have said something and it might have triggered something in you but I don't know what it is that has been triggered in you yeah right I love that what's the question that you're telling yourself right yeah now? what are you or what is the story you're making up right now what is the story you're telling yourself and so in her mind she was thinking he was saying she she doesn't do anything she doesn't do shopping or anything like that and he wasn't when she dug deep and rumbled with it it came out that um he was just saying oh wow i don't have any lunch meat or or whatnot he wasn't really criticizing her Mm. oh that's good really asking the question yeah. in a non-judgmental way just being curious either with yourself or with your partner before you jump to criticism or judgment yes yes that is so key because we you know we already have enough to deal with in life right some of us have children that we're dealing with and again like you're saying financial stressors and things yeah. like that and it's like if you can keep that line of connect of communication open and that that connectiveness between the couple unit um i think i think you're winning Absolutely. I mean, stonewalling is like the worst thing that predicts divorce for couples. And so stonewalling happens when one person either shuts down emotionally, like sometimes people can be home, come home every night, but they're shut down emotionally. Or sometimes people shut down physically, like I'm done with this conversation. I'm not talking Mm -hmm. about this anymore. And so really just staying engaged with each other, not letting distance grow in your relationship, like being willing to talk to things and see things from the other person's perspective that is so true um putting yourself um in the other person's shoe exercising empathy Mm -hmm. right yeah my goodness i we've been talking about this and we're saying that if there's ever a time that we need grace and to give grace is now it's now it's right now extend each other grace like be willing to apologize babe I was wrong I'm sorry please forgive me what can I do to make it better like be willing to to just acknowledge when you get it wrong because we all get it wrong sometimes I get it wrong sometimes and I just gotta be like I'm sorry I'm sorry what can I do how can I make it right Exactly. That is so key. And I was thinking about, you know, as we were preparing for this talk, I was thinking about what, what are some of the things like practical things that um, couples can do around now to enhance their marriage. And one is to call Dr. Laura, (laughs) Get, get on her schedule. But I was also thinking about, you know, the tool of the love language tool, the five love language tool. 
I think that would be something so critical. I love Gary Chapman. A few years ago, I was doing a couple's retreat with Gary Chapman, the author of the five love languages. And I just love him. Oh my gosh, I love his work. I recommend his work. Couples out there, go to fivelovelanguages.com, do the quick assessment. So it can reveal to you your love language, which may be different from your partner's love language. That is so true. I remember a while back, just a little disclosure. Um, I was showing my husband my love language, <laughs> right? And yeah. I'm like, I'm doing it right. I'm doing, you know, this, but that wasn't what he needed, right? And for those who are not familiar with the love language, um, uh, by the five love languages by Gary Chapman, it's uh, one is, I hope I get them right one is um physical touch Mm -hmm. words of affirmation right gifts giving gifts or receiving gifts and acts of service service. Mm -hmm. yes and quality time yeah right so if we know how to speak our spouse's love language that really it fills their bucket Right. And it gives them energy to to keep going on. Absolutely. And I know for me, I grew up like my mom is a therapist. So she was like words of affirmation all over the place. Like I could be the tree in the school play. And she was like, baby, you are the best tree out there. And so my love language is words of affirmation. And my husband is Haitian. He grew up in a very like traditional, like Haitian parents, like hardcore environment and his love language is acts of service and so I may be like you doing good man you the way to go on that and but it's not going to resonate with him the same way as it will resonate right. with me and right. so I had to just learn how to be loving based on his love language and in the beginning of our marriage mm-hmm. we've been together 17 years but in the beginning of our marriage it was like a real like learning process so I just want to encourage the couples out there to give each other grace and and also be intentional about how you show love because sometimes we'll show love the way we want to receive it not the way our partners really want to receive it exactly exactly so Dr. Laura I know we're coming to the end of our time together and it just seemed like it's gone by so quickly um what is one or two things that you want couples who are listening to really, really take away from this talk? Uh, I want you to empathize with your mate. Definitely Mm -hmm. show empathy. Give yourself grace during this time um, and be willing to be willing to apologize when you get it wrong. You know, that's that's a lesson that I had to um, definitely learn in, in being, being married is like apologize and ask for help. Ask specifically for what you need and what you desire in a positive way. That is so good. That is so good. And first you got to recognize that you could be wrong. You know, it's a possibility Mm -hmm. that you could get it wrong. (laughs) Right. Um, This has been so good. Please tell people what's coming up for you. I know you've got some exciting stuff going on. Uh, Tell them about your book and then tell them how they can find you. Okay, definitely. So my book is called Marital Peace. Um, I wrote this book because I felt like I didn't really know like what it took to build a strong marriage when I first got married and I made a lot of mistakes and so I decided that I didn't want to just kick the ladder down behind me but I wanted to put it into a manual for other couples so you could check it out on Amazon and then my program is called After I Do Academy so you can find that at bit.ly slash after I do academy each letter is capitalized after I do academy um and so after I do academy is a program where I really work with you I give you tools and strategies on how you can rebuild trust um that's one of the number one reasons why couples um come to me for for support and so I talk about that in the after I do academy rebuilding trust and communication so I'd love to connect with you more and thank you so much for having me 
Absolutely, absolutely. This has been amazing. You've been married 17 years. Congratulations. Um, in about two months, we'll be hitting 32. And I'm so excited. I, I always um, one day at a time. And my husband and I, we have this thing that we say to each other, we're always better together no matter what. Mm, I love that. No That's beautiful. What. So thank you again. And thank you all for watching mm -hmm. us this evening. And please like and share this because it might save somebody's marriage. For real. <laughs> for real.